Silicon Valley United States Awards Ceremony being held at the Intercontinental Mark Hopkins Hotel in the beautiful city of San Francisco. Please welcome now Jesse Fernandez, a comedian, a writer, and producer. a hand for coming out tonight. <laughs> to receive the awards, you've already won. <laughs> Congratulations. I always think it's weird to do award shows like that where it's like, you know, you've won the award, now you come to an event to accept it. They should at least make the losers show up, <laughs> right? Read up the other nominees so they, it feels so much better by comparison, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm getting some nods, totally. You know what's weird about this event? They, those people clapping for the people taking a picture outside? Not paid. They just, they just knew you guys were winners. <laughs> I got here early, I was like one of the first ones here, and uh, except for the clapping people. And then I went to take my picture. They clapped for me. And I was like, oh, yeah, they must have seen my videos online. Yeah, feeling kind of famous. You guys are doing great so far. You're a wonderful audience. In addition to whatever it is you won, you also won this. Here you go. Take this. Yeah, you bet. That's valuable. What is it? It's a key ring, hell yeah. They want a key ring. They absolutely did want a key ring. And if you guys are good, you might win a key ring too. That's pretty cool, huh? Not only is that a key ring, but it's also a whistle. You can get people's attention with those things. That's very valuable. Mm-hmm. So I like this. This is like a holiday that you get just for winning an award. I think that's very cool, you know? Um, it's one of the few holidays that like I do like. I'm not a huge fan of holidays in general. I feel like holidays, when you break them down, are basically just exceptions to rules that there should not be exceptions to. You know? That creates bad habits. I'll give you some examples. Halloween. Every other day of the year, we're like, do not accept candy from strangers. <laughs> oh, except for that one day when all the strangers are wearing disguises. <laughs> then go nuts. Get out there. It's exceptions to rules. Right? You're nodding with me. Don't overeat. Thanksgiving. Don't let strangers in the house. Santa Claus. Don't eat stuff you find in the backyard. Easter. <laughs> Don't let your dad kidnap you and start a new life in Nevada. My birthday. Once. <laughs> it's exceptions to rules. We shouldn't have those. <laughs> you guys are doing good. You, you guys won one of these things. Huh? You, there you go. Congratulations. They did it. Who here is from San Francisco, born and raised? <laughs> Quite a local show. Who here is from Pakistan? <laughs> nice. More people from Pakistan in San Francisco than from San Francisco. <laughs> Who here lives in San Francisco now? OK, all right, thank God, somebody. <laughs> Cool. What's your favorite thing about San Francisco? The food. The food. Nice. Good choice. Burritos, amazing. My favorite thing about San Francisco? The people. 100%. The people here are incredible. They always have been. Has never changed. You know, I was just walking around in San Francisco just the other day, and I overheard this guy, for example, just the magic of San Francisco, I overheard this guy whispering, you're not crippled. It you don't need that wheelchair. To a baby in a stroller. <laughs> that man was a true gem. San Francisco's amazing. I love it. Happy birthday, statistically, probably. Somebody in the audience? Is this somebody's birthday? Really? That is unusual. Who wants to pretend like it's their birthday? <laughs> Okay, you, you just won an award. Way to go. <laughs>
Thank you. I know I said I wouldn't go past this spot, but I'm doing it anyway because you guys won an award and you're very special people. There you go. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit loose up here. Uh, I never drink, just when I'm working. Now, we're having a good time. I'm a positive guy. I am. I like to spin things positive. That's just how I am. Like, I got a, I got a, a, a gas station lemonade recent, recently. I was at a gas station, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to find something healthy, and I got a lemonade from the gas station. And I looked at the nutrition facts on that, on that gas station lemonade, and I saw that it was 0% juice. Now, a negative person would get upset. Like, what a waste of money I just made. Not me. I took it positive, and I drank it down. Because I was like, what an underdog of a company. Because life didn't even give them lemons. And they were still like, we're making lemonade. <laughs> what? What? No, why is it yellow? <laughs> I won't say that joke, and then somebody yelled out at me, uh, actually, that lemonade brand is made with 3% juice. And I, that is a rude heckle. A fact check in the middle of the comedian's act. But I took it positive, and I let that person know that they can uh, go to hell. But I also let them know <laughs> that no, it's not. It's 0% juice. Like, do you really think I would write and perform that entire joke without doing the research first? No. No way. I, there was no way. That would be so, that would really, I looked it up later. It is 3% juice. <laughs> I like the joke. I want to keep doing it. So I just keep doing it. Oh man, you guys are so fun right now. This is so awesome. I'm going to do something extra special for you guys. All right? I am going to read somebody's mind in this audience. All right? I'm telling you, that is what I'm going to do. All right? Now think about whether or not you want to volunteer, and then I will pick you based on that thought that you've had. Okay? All right? So see that thought? I'll come back to it. I have a job right now. It's really fun. I love my job. It, for a long time, I didn't want to get a job. I waited to get a job until I found a job that was better than not having a job, which can take some time. You know, like I'd go to these job interviews, and then midway through the interview, I would realize that job was going to suck, and I would just emotionally bail on the interview from that moment forward. You know, like I was in an interview once, and an interviewer asked me um, if you could have lunch with anybody living or dead, who would you pick? And I was like, living. I don't want that job. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys are warming up. You're feeling good. All right. The person who wants me to read their mind, you with the glasses. You thought about it, didn't you? Yeah, I knew it. I absolutely knew it. I'm going to read your mind, OK? First of all, what's your name? Vic. Zig? Vic. Vic, I know. <laughs> you have a sister. I wasn't talking to you, the person behind you. You have a sister. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Yeah, it's proximity mind reading. Now, you have a brother, though. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's what it was. I knew, I knew you had somebody in your life who was related to you. <laughs> I was pretty certain of that. <laughs> All right, Vic, I'm going to read your mind, OK? And the only catch is that it takes me two guesses, all right? Not bad, 50% accuracy, all right? Now, what I need you to do, Vic, is focus on the thing that you want me to read, OK? Do you have it? OK. First guess. You're thinking about kissing your brother. <laughs> no? OK, guess number two. Now you're thinking about kissing your brother. What? How do I do it? How is it done? Vic, you are a wonderful sport. Thank you so much, Vic, for, for, for volunteering. You are a sweet man, Vic. Vic, what did you win tonight? You're winning three awards? Oh, man, you guys are on top of the world. How much money do you guys make? You would know. <laughs> OK, here you go. No Thank problem. You. Yeah. you know, absolutely. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Everyone enjoy yourself. 
Now, they say it's, it's gauche to ask people how much they make because that divide, that potential divide between how much you make and the other person make could, could, could cause a rift between you and that person. But I totally disagree. You know? Because if Vic makes enough money, we will be best friends. <laughs> All right, you guys have been amazing. This is going to be a wonderful event. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, that you guys are going to win. So, well done in advance. Uh, I have been, Je I will continue to be Jesse, and uh, you guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Harris, the Master of Ceremonies for today's SVUS Awards. Hi, how are you? How about another hand for Jesse? Did any of you attend our last event and see the performer we had then? Any, was anyone here for that? No? Well, of course you were. Let me just say, this was a giant step in the right direction. Uh, a couple of things before I get started reading all of my slides. Number one, how do you like the suit? <laughs> So it's a funny story about this suit. When I went to buy it, the sales guy, he, uh, he brings it over and he's like, I don't know what you think about this. And I said, well, what, what color would you say that that suit is? <laughs> he didn't go salmon, he didn't go coral. He went taupe. This is taupe. He's like, I was like, take your sunglasses off. This is clearly pink. And you're going to put me in a pink suit. And he goes, well, here's the thing. With this pink suit, there are only three types of guys that can get away with wearing a pink suit. Number one is a Southern Baptist preacher. <laughs> number two is a rock star. And number three is a... And he whispered this, homosexual. He said it was seven syllables, homosexual. It was hysterical. And I said, wait, what was the last thing he said? Homosexual. I, uh, homosexual could wear that suit. And I said, OK, two out of three ain't bad. Sold. In other news, uh, I will be giving a sermon on the evils of Elton John at St. Stephen's next week. So. Be great. All right, a couple of house clean.